There are 84 supers in Brawl Stars, some of them great and some of them, uh... So let's take a look at every super in the game and rank them from worst to best. Now, unless Janet was inspired by Taylor Swift, I don't see how flight makes sense for a pop star. In theory, the flight should be pretty dang strong, but when you couple it with the fact that Janet's super controls worse than the character from Flappy Bird, and the bombs she drops are about as accurate as trying to auto-aim in basketball, you get what is quite possibly the worst super in the entire game, not to mention how how absurdly long it takes to charge. A super that doesn't take long to charge, however, its pearls let out some steam. But what it makes up for in charge rate, it lacks in, you know, being able to hit anything. This super short range means that people generally won't come close enough to you for you to use it for anything other than breaking walls. Unless they're melee brawlers with a death wish. And speaking of melee brawlers, have you guys ever heard of how good baseball players are at shooting bubbles of gum at people? No? Well, that's kind of the issue with BB Spitball. While on the one hand, it makes sense since she chews gum, on the other hand, it doesn't make sense for someone who hits people with a baseball bat to randomly shoot out a massive ball of bubblegum. While Sugar Ray is devastating and satisfying to use when you get a shot, it is one of the easiest things in the world to miss. And that means you'll rarely utilize it to its full potential. It's a similar case with RT's hide and seek. The super itself is easy to use and can prove effective against assassins and the like, but it's not always the case and sometimes you end up using it with nobody close by and now you're just awkwardly floating around wondering where everybody went. Out of Frame is a pretty genius super name for a cinema themed brawler like Miko and the ability to heal and reload while you're in the air does make this a pretty useful super, but while while it's great for taking out teams, players do need to be careful to not use it at the wrong time since Brawlers can outrun it and your team at that point of time is left in the lurch. Chester's Pop Rocks is honestly more of a curse than a blessing. It's kind of like a spike super, but you can't throw it where you want it to be, which makes this super very risky to use. And Salmiaki, another one of Chester's super, is basically just like Ems' attack, except that Ems does more damage, but Salmiaki gives you some poison damage over time. A lot of supers in Brawl Stars are easy to use, but not lifeblood. For more to get any use out of this super, the player needs to have a lot of experience playing with him, especially in the skill set of positioning yourself to hit the maximum amount of enemies at once, and not do this. When it comes to snipers, positioning matters a lot, which is why it makes me wonder why Angelo's super forces him to stay in one place just to make use of it. While it does add a debilitating amount of poison damage to Zeros, being in that swamp and holding the lane is difficult for a brawler that needs to charge their attack. Tailspin is probably one of the most nonsensical supers in the game, since I can't imagine how becoming a Beyblade makes sense for a miner. But lore aside, Carl's super is also not particularly particularly easy to hit as it has a very short range and can be countered by stuns and knockbacks. Rico Super isn't the easiest thing in the world to charge up and doesn't provide a lot of utility for your entire team. But man, do I love how destructive a Rico Super can be in the right hands. Not like this guy. Speaking of coming up, you know what doesn't come up? Crow Super. Seriously, Swoop is one of the most painful supers to charge. Admittedly, the super itself provides a ton of benefits for your team, like the anti-heal and the damage reduction, but I cannot bring myself to rank it higher than this due to how hard I have to try to even be able to use it in the first place. But Crow will probably be fine without his super. In fact, almost every brawler would still be a competitive option if they lost their supers. But one brawler who would be absolutely absolutely worthless without their super is none other than Surge. We all know how Surge's super gradually makes him strong every time he uses it. Admittedly, his super is much better now than what it used to be before the rework. But the problem here is that Surge's super doesn't help his team and only serves to cover up Surge's own weakness, which is something gadgets and star powers are supposed to do, not supers. A super that didn't change even after the brawler was reworked, however, is Meg's Field of Steel. You know, the big robot whack. It gives Meg a better 
better fighting chance against assassins, but is for the most part more of a personal utility than an ultimate ability. That's not to say that personal utility is always a bad thing. Cordelius's super is one of the most versatile supers in the game, from saving goals, to scoring goals, to shutting down hypercharges, and confirming kills. You can't go wrong with this one. The only problem is that it's not as easy to charge up when your opponents know how to pressure you back. Maisie is one brawler whose super is reviled by anyone who has experienced it, but the super itself is incredibly strong. The only reason it is as big of a threat as it is is that it is often used in combination with her gadget and star power. Without them, the super mostly is just there to threaten enemies that would try to get close. Now, in terms of what it stands for, something to counter assassins with, Hank super is actually pretty great, but that's about where the positives stop. This super is incredibly underwhelming. It is difficult to get full value out of it, and if it wasn't one of the easiest supers in the game to use, it would not be this high on this list. Bull super is amazing, or it would have been about five years ago, but over the years, we have seen way too many brawlers added to the game with abilities that can counter bull. But in a vacuum, it has benefits like being easy to charge and almost unstoppable once it begins. We're back to Chester with this one, Strong Mint, or for those of you who don't memorize the names of this super, the healing one. Any healing super is great, but this stands out in particular as it functions as a super that heals you over time and not just a single heal. This allows Chester to be way more aggressive, especially since he can charge up a new super while still being healed. Chuck's super has a big problem. Whenever you're inside the range of a train post, you lose the option to reposition it. So if you misplace a post, you'll be wasting precious moments struggling to correct it. But if you do happen to get a good placement for your supers, then Choo Choo becomes one of the best and almost one of my favorite supers in the game, especially on a mode like Heist. Another super that's satisfying to use as long as you don't set yourself up poorly is Nani's super Manual Override. There is almost nothing more satisfying than actually hitting someone with Peep, a feeling that's boosted thanks to how difficult it is to drive peep in the first place. Chester's Kenny Popper is another good Chester super since it breaks walls, causes knockback, and deals a frightening amount of damage to anyone who gets caught in the radius. However, with only a 20% chance for you to get it, it lacks a bit in the department of consistency. Radar Waves RT's second super is better than the first, since while the first only splits him in half, the second reverses him to his original state but also heals him and moves him to a new location. Melody's catchy chorus definitely gets the style points, but while it can be used to create impact by a skilled enough player, the majority of the player base will likely rush in without charging notes, effectively doing no damage. Bonnie has two supers, and the first one we'll be talking about is Clyde, the one that puts her back in her cannon. Bonnie's greatest strength is her ability to launch herself at her enemies and get some assassin-like kills, but that is not possible unless you hop back onto the cannon. So this super makes Makes sense for her playstyle. Jackie's super holy moly can be used in a multitude of ways like bunching up a team for a team wipe or opening up a goal scoring opportunity. But much like her main attack, charging it up and using it is easier said than done considering that most players will run away from her when they see her coming. El Primo's flying elbow drop is a bit of a paradox. Being a short range brawler that he is, a super that breaks walls and pushes people away from him only serves to hurt him both in the short and the long term. It can be a dangerous thing to deal with if used in short range situations. Shelly's super shell is a fairly straightforward super, great for breaking walls or camping a zone to create an area of influence. However, its power decreases the higher up in rank you go, since most players figure out how to play around her. Leon's smoke bomb is quite a dangerous one, letting him poof in front of an enemy and take them out with the element of surprise. While it does take a minute to charge up, there is a lot of personal utility that he gains from it but it doesn't help his team out. Chester's Jawbreaker is his best super, as a stun is one of the most powerful abilities in the game. But much like Candy Popper and Healing Mint, the fact that this super only has a 20% chance of appearing prevents it from being any higher on this list. Bell Spotter can be a game changer, as marking an important enemy like the Gem Carrier or the highest bounty player can greatly affect how both teams pressure each other. If only it was easier to hit someone. Meg's Mech 
Mecha Machina is a weird one since she spawns in with her super and is in it most of the time. While it fits her kit, it has no bearing on the game itself and leaves her open to attacks for a short period of time. Now, Willow's Hex is a fairly difficult super to land, but if you do manage to hit it, it can be crucial in turning the tide of the game, but it leaves you open for a counter attack. Griff's cashback is similar. The fact that it's a piercing attack has a massive range, deals a ton of damage, and returns back to him makes it a very threatening super to face on short to medium range maps. Bonnie Star Launcher super allows her to literally jump onto and kill her enemies. This makes her a very potent assassin. But once she's in her small form, she's very susceptible to being taken out since her range is short and she can only get back into Clyde after waiting for a while. Colt's Bullet Storm is an amazing super with the potential for lethality, but it's hard to land your shot since you have to not only aim but also strafe at the same time. Very hard to get a lot of value with it, but in the right hands, it's amazing. There's very little that can deal with Rosa's super since she's almost impossible to kill with her super up. Unless you're Colette, Shelly, or some brawler that can push back enemies like Gale. Buzz's torpedo throw is great, not just because it gets him in the opponent's face while stunning them, but also because it provides him with a ton of mobility, allowing for opportunities like trick shots, quick getaways, or team wipes. Terra super isn't the easiest thing to charge up, but it hits hard, opening the way for so many game-changing scenarios and team plays. Squeak's Big Blob is one of those supers that feels useless, but can be underrated in some situations, as it does have a massive range. Much like Buzz's super, Fangs allows him to get up in his enemy's face, something that greatly benefits a short-range brawler like Fang. But don't use it in the wrong situation, or you will end up making life harder for your teammates. Otis's Silent Seabed doesn't make sense in his kit, but it is very useful and fairly easy to get, and can be used to shut down assassins and tanks who try to get a bit too spicy very effectively. Grom's Big Bomb is kinda like Dynamite Super, but the wall break is to a lesser degree. It does knock back opponents and can be very hard to dodge if you don't time it right. Though being fairly simple to use, it does take a while to get due to Grom's reload speed. Dynamite's Big Barrel of Boom is paradoxical in the same nature as El Primo's. Like he's a thrower right? Why does his super break walls? I mean it makes sense in terms of realism, but doesn't make sense in terms of the brawler design. Still, the amount of value that can be gained from properly hitting this super isn't something that can be understated where if you hit two opponents, you get it back automatically. Gene's Magic Hand is one of the most useful supers for changing the flow of the game, but while being reasonably simple to get and great for teams, it is sort of hard to aim, especially if you don't know that you can just auto aim it within a 5 tile radius of a brawler with a 100% success rate. Piper Super is great for getting away from assassins or breaking up those pesky walls that throwers hide behind, and unlike Primo and Dynamite, it also greatly complements her playstyle. While Ash's rats themselves don't do a lot of damage, they can easily overwhelm brawlers with a single shot attack, not to mention charging up Ash's super and rage in the process if they get hit, which makes him stronger than before he used a super. 8-bit's damage booster creates a zone of influence through which it becomes hazardous for enemies to pass through. This is a great super since it provides utility for controllers and allows 8-bit and other ranged options to be huge threats in modes like Heist. Hedge allows Sprout to ideally separate itself from enemies and create narrow areas where it or its teammates can target these enemies. But in reality, how much it actually helps Sprout's teammates is questionable. And now we arrive at the best brawler in the game, Nita. Obviously because, you know, Panda Nita, duh. No bias of course, but seriously, Bruce plays really well with Nita and allows her to chase down opponents that have no pierce damage to create some distance or relieve pressure for the team. But beware of Penny. Torchum allows Amber to control swathes on the map with her oil, allowing her to exert a massive amount of control wherever she likes. If brawlers get over that oil slick, they will surely get burned. Byron's full treatment has utility similar to Poco's heal, fairly simple to get 
get, but it also damages enemies as well, providing double the value at times. Doug's second serving is one of the best support abilities in the game. It allows him to be way more aggressive than normal, netting many kills as well, creates room for his teammates, and can also be used on his teammates to provide free resurrection in times of need. But because of his range, it is hard to get. Charlie's super is one of the most annoying things in the entire game, and it just makes me want to break out a can of bug spray and fire it at my phone. So yeah, it's a great super. Edgar's Vault is an iconic super that lets him take out squishy brawlers effortlessly. Plus, it's incredibly easy to get since all you need to do is just beat a bush and it'll charge by itself. Lola Super is one of the best in the game since it allows her to exert a lot of control on the map if positioned correctly. And if it isn't, a penny is surely going to get a ton of value. Sam is a short range brawler and his super allows him to close the gap between himself and his enemies while dealing damage at the same time. And Daryl's super? A simple mechanic that can be used for many different situations like confirming kills or rushing a safe or even scoring a goal. And the best part is that it automatically charges up. Spike super is somewhat tedious to get, but once you have it, it allows Spike to dictate the pace of the game, sometimes being strong enough to block multiple lanes. Gales? Scale Force is incredibly intuitive to use, and it is effective against so many types of enemies, from assassins to snipers, not to mention how adaptable it is in both offensive and defensive scenarios. Colette's super is a threat to beware of, as she can easily kill every brawler in the game by simply hitting them with two many attacks and a super. It is possible to dodge time to collect, but that is remedied by her star powers. Head first allows Tick to be less susceptible to his assassin counters. It is easy to get, and with the knockback it presents, you can even go for solo kills if you're good enough. The only weakness it has is that it can easily be tanked by spawners like Mr. P, Ash, or Eve. Rocket Rain has a lot of trademark advantages of Piper Super, like dealing a lot of damage and opening up the map. It isn't that hard to get, but with the amount of map that it can open up, it could be a double-edged sword for the team. Funnily enough, Gray's Super makes him something of an assassin, especially against low HP brawlers. And since his super can be used by teammates, the value it provides in modes like Hot Zone is immense. Stu's Nitro Boost is fun, easy to use, and pretty simple to keep getting back. If you need to get it initially though, it might be hard on long range maps or against more experienced teams who keep their range. Kit Super is versatile and can be used for either offense or defense. Team compositions matter a lot when deciding how to use this effectively but the adaptability it provides is a major asset, and it doesn't hurt that Kit just gets a super by waiting. Jesse's super is great, because while it takes a second to charge up, the value you gain from it, if positioned correctly, is almost like adding a fourth member to the team. Just uh, <laughs> use Energize like a normal person, please. Sandstorm is an invaluable super for teams, as it allows for a lot of sneaky plays that can effectively turn games that are seemingly lost around, or assert dominance against others. Mark my words, when a Sandy puts a Sandstorm down, nobody is willingly walking into it. Being a snowman can do allows Lou to slow and disorient opponents and even freeze opponents who overstay their welcome. As far as remote area control goes, this is one of the strongest supers in the game, which is further enhanced by his gadgets, star powers, and hypercharge. Ruffs is man's best friend, and with this super, he is the entire team with little trees that buff everybody, and these buffs are permanent until the affected player dies, so it is a really helpful ability to use. Spooky Boy accentuates Gus's support ability, making so that your aggressive tanky teammates survive a bit longer and stamp out teams with authority. It is slightly difficult to land, but it does go through map elements, which helps a lot when applying it to a teammate. Montage allows Buster to be way more aggressive since there's no counterplay to it, especially if you don't face a thrower. In addition to that, if your team's buster runs out in front with the montage, it allows the entire team to push up if used right. With Pam being a support cleric, her healing station allows her to hunker down in an area. This provides value to the team as well as a base for respite, and if the turret is behind a wall or an obstruction, it makes Pam or whichever brawler it's assisting much harder to kill. Old Robber is one of the best supers in the game according to the brawler kit. Grand 
granted, it does take a while to get, especially if you're up against a good team. But if you can place it in an area which is hard to reach, it instantaneously makes Penny the MVP in many situations. Just make sure you put it down early on in a match, otherwise your Penny isn't doing all that much. Porter's Attack. This is a great super as it allows Mr. P some survivability in a pinch. It annoys the heck out of single target brawlers, and it is also easy to get and hard to remove from the map, especially when placed very far behind. There's a reason Max's super is so popular in the esports scene. It allows for a ton of team aggression, and brawlers that aren't as fast or have a lesser range get pressured heavily by her and her super. Iron Hive allows B to auto aim her shots against opposing brawlers. As they're significantly slowed down due to the debuffs this super causes. It halts aggression and the soul can be used on multiple brawlers to create huge opportunities for game changing plays for the entire team. Caustic Charisma is one of the better designed supers in the game. It allows M's to halt any aggression from brawlers who walk into her and makes it impossible to run away from M's once you're in her clutches. Even if you don't catch anyone inside of it, almost everyone's reaction to seeing this super charge is to run away making it great for area control. Eve's Baby Boom is right up there in the top 5 supers in the game, since very few brawlers can effectively get rid of her babies, and even then it usually causes them to waste a lot of ammo, allowing Eve and her teammates to dominate the map. Barley is a monster when it comes to controlling zones in a map, and if the terrain is conducive to him, his super makes him a huge threat. He can take out entire teams or relieve pressure for his teammates allowing them to move higher up on the map. And speaking of moving higher up, we have now arrived at the top three supers in Brawl Stars. At number three, it's Poco's Encore, which when used right, can ensure his teammates survive for much longer than they would have, allowing for some amazing team play opportunities. Number two, Stunning Blow by Frank. Didn't expect to see Frank this high, did ya? But let me explain. With the amount of HP that Frank has, simply having his super active is a threat. He's the only brawler in the game that makes people run away without even using the super because people know how screwed they are if they actually get hit by it. And I don't think any other brawler in the game except for Surge is as reliant on the super to actually make the entire kit of the brawler. Finally, at number one, Larry's call for backup. No matter how much you try to balance it, this super will be the strongest in the game. And it is so strong for one reason, Lori, who Larry summons with his super. Lori has more advanced AI than other spawnables in the game. He has a massive range and attacks with mechanics similar to the shotgun, but what really makes Lori such a threat is that hitting him doesn't charge up your super, meaning that most of the time he's eating up your ammo while pushing you back. Unless Supercell make him easy to kill or reduces his damage drastically, Larry and Lori will maintain their position of having the best super in the entire game. 